over to you ma'am yes so good morning one and all and uh, today myself dr poonam sharma and uh, on behalf of sridhankar mahavir college of nursing oh. and tmu in collaboration with iac i am very highly honored and feel privileged to welcome our guest speaker dr deepak sethi who is presently working as a professor at college of nursing in the sharda university so today sir is having the vast experience in teaching the various nursing programs at the different college of nursing and he is having the vast experience in the medical surgical nursing especially and it's my immense pleasure to introduce a man with the profound knowledge and illustrious educationist he is having more than 13 year of experience and uh, he is having the more than 16 plus or 19 plus scopus publications he has authored so many different books like in the area of medical surgical nursing applied pharmacology applied pathology applied genetics applied microbiology and nutrition and dietetics and sir has done the phd from the renowned university symbiosis international university and he has the different uh, responsibilities at the different positions in the various universities so welcome sir and uh, sir has readily accepted our invitation so thank you so much sir and i welcome you and definitely this session will be an eye opening session for all the medical nursing students and they will collaborate in their clinical practice thank you so much and welcome once again thank you so much uh, punam ma'am and it's my indeed pleasure to be on the platform um, along with the my mentor my teacher who has taught me uh, when i lay down the foundation of a uh, become a budding nurse uh, in mulana college of nursing it's my pleasure ma'am to to get uh, so many pleasurable words from a teacher's <laughs> word of mouth students uh, so i think it's a lesson for for your students as well like if you really achieve your target uh, once your guru or your teachers uh, appreciate you at this stage so it's indeed my pleasure ma'am and i would like to thanks uh, tirthankar mahavir university and college of nursing for inviting me as a guest lecturer for giving me the opportunity to be uh, on this platform and sharing a few of ideas about the recent trends in medical surgical nursing so uh, now i think uh, can we start ma'am yeah just i want to say uh, to the my students sir will be taking up the session in very depth way as the like uh, today's modern era and technology so many upcoming changes have been done in the medical field and in the nursing field so sir will be dealing by the various issues i think robotic surgery aerospace surgery aerospace nursing tally nursing and uh, so many things have been come up if they are having any doubt after the session only they can take up their doubts and they can uh, write in the chat box right so uh, you can start uh, sir yeah thank you so much ma'am um, actually as uh, you have very correctly said ma'am that many recent trends has been uh, evolved in medicine and the surgical field so side by side they all are also uh, used by the nursing fraternity across the globe uh, but uh, when i was preparing the content for this uh, recent trend so i have uh, gone through many areas which has already been uh, taught in our curriculum and uh, for example you have mentioned about tele nursing and telepathy so i think if the research point of view we have uh, seen many papers on these topics uh, this is this is the only reason that why the indian nursing council has devised a curriculum and uh, it's uh, evident that uh, they have uh, incorporate many new subjects because the things and the technologies nowadays is going to be evolved day by day that is why the forensic nursing and this health health informatics has been introduced to the nursing curriculum aspects so uh, not uh, i just want to uh, highlight those areas which are very great in nursing uh, and this medicine point of view in medicine yeah they are they already been introduced since so long but in nursing uh, these areas are very great and uh, i'm not going to use those areas which are 
uh, already been in, introduced uh, by many people in books or, or over the internet and all. So I hope uh, at the end of the presentation, you feel that these are the areas where your research can go on into the way, as well as uh, your area of your career programs can also be introduced. So uh, let's start with the introduction part for this. Yes. So the if we talk about the evolution of medical surgical nursing in the ancient times when the uh, medical lore was associated with the good evil spirits. So there was a time we know very well if we talk about the mental health as uh, Puna Ma'am is expert in the mental psychiatric nursing. So there was a time when uh, people treat this mental illness as a uh, evil spirit. So just imagine we have evolved from that area and now we are upcoming in this uh, golden era where the technology is so vast. So the sick were usually cared for the temples and the houses of worship. These women and the patients had no real training but but the experiences taught them valuable skills, especially in the use of herbs, drugs, and some gained fame as a physician of their era. Yeah. So if we, so if, if we go a little bit in, uh, if we move on 30, 40 years back, 50s or 70s, uh, those who are born in that area, I hope the students have not born in that time, but yes, uh, your seniors and me as well was from that era. So we know very well majority of things has been treated at home itself unless it is really required any surgical or medical intervention or attention. So nursing subsequently become one of the most important uh, most important pro profession um, open to the women until the social changes brought by the revival of the feministic movements that began in 1960. So we know very well the, this uh, medical, the, there was a time when the nursing was only uh, reported by the female fraternities and all, but nowadays many males are upcoming in this area. Yeah, there are certain gray areas like uh, like like Indian Army and all where still the men's has not been proven to become uh, uh, nursing officers. So uh, adult patients in many of the large hospitals were typically assigned to separate medical and surgical and obstetrical wards, nursing education in hospital training. Schools reflected these divisions to prepare nurses to work these units. So there was a time when, when, when the units are not that much specialized. If you talk about nowadays, we are having even the neurological ICUs. ICUs are um, divided into certain categories like cardiac ICUs are separate, neuro ICUs are separate and all. But there was a time when the critical care units are ICU means ICU means whoever patient, whether it belongs to a neurological, a neurological illness or a cardiac illness or a nephrological illness, they all were introduced to a one ICU only. So the evolutions has changed things now. Now we are uh, having segregate units and departments as well. So these are the these are not recent trends actually, but these are the areas from where we have evolved now. So the why we uh, whenever we talk about the nurse in this recent trends, I think the evolution should be there in our brain so that we can just relate our past, present, and future. So this is the only reason that why uh, I, I just want to go a bit back about uh, uh, how the things has been reported. So the students uh, now. So let's talk about the trends in the uh, medical surgical nursing. So recent trends. Amazing medical surgical nurses that globally uh, includes the, the increased use, use of nursing care management and the expansion of advanced nursing practices, total quality improvement. Yes, here I just want to put emphasize that quality improvement and the quality management process is very weak if we talk about the trends in nursing. So in the upcoming slide, I would like to uh, share one of the gray area, which is really not even touched by the healthcare um, management people. So this is an area I think where many things can be improved. Development of a clinical pathway, changes in the profession practice models, healthcare reforms, and the trends towards increasing equity of patients begins in 1980 and has become a fact of life. 
so these are the few areas which we have seen many times in books or internet and all so let's see what else are there in the uh, recent trends so how the uh, nursing practices if if the recent trends and all uh, will be evolved so fast uh, globally so how how it affects it expands the knowledge and technology evidence based practice that is the, the core curriculum uh, yes so uh, we were here the, the influences of the future nursing practices so where are the areas that how the uh, the areas which really affects uh, the recent trends or the upcoming trends in medicine and uh, nursing uh, so these are the expanding knowledge and the technology the, because the te technology uh, nowadays like in form of robotic nursing and the uh, forensic nursing and aeronautical nursing so these are the areas even the genetic nursing is coming nowadays with a great emphasis so these are the area which can be improved by expanding the te technological aspects evidence based practice one of the second um, main component of, about the trends for the upcoming um, healthcare settings so these are the areas where the uh, i think the research will come uh, in between research will come in between where the whatever inventions and whatever patents we are doing nowadays it should be totally based on the evidence based practice so healthy uh, people initiatives still uh, these are the areas where uh, things can be improved standardized nursing terminologies are there and last are the healthcare informatics and the uh, your nursing informatics these are the areas so uh, without wasting any time let's talk about the one of the area which is seriously uh, very uh, gray and we are having a wide scope for the nursing people uh, to to become a part of uh, this robotic nursing so how can uh, this i hope i hope all the students uh, they, they must have heard about the robotic nursing because nowadays um, majority of surgical interventions has been done by the use of a uh, robots yeah not on all the hospitals but the majority of the private sectors uh, the the initiative are taken by the management the robot surgeries they have proven that uh, uh, a very uh, good prognosis and the post surgical complications are less if the surgery is the robot robotic nursing so what exactly the robotic uh, helps in the surgery? so it 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 accurates the positioning using pre operative and the pre operative registration and all so uh, so the, the the chances of getting errors uh, during the sur surgeries and all is very less because uh, when the robots are invo involved in the surgical interventions and all the we cannot say it's accurate but yeah it's precise i hope i hope you to i hope the students must know uh, the difference between the accuracy and the precision so if a human being is doing a surgery they are definitely it should be accurate it, it should be 100% but if we talk about the robotic surgeries and all it is always be precise for example the way they put the stitches and all is more accurate than the human hands accurate paths following like bone milling skin harvestings are are still it's a challenging task for the plastic surgeons but the robotics are involved in the plastic surgeries and all and they are doing a tremendous good things solving the hand eye coordination problem so the how the robots uh, while they are working in this uh, operation theaters along with the surgeons and the nursing officers so they they just solve the problem of hands and eye coordination and all because we know very well majority of the positive surgeons are suffering uh, with any kind of a tremors or anxiety disorder the surgery may prove wrong so that that problem is now solved out because no more human hands are involved uh, that is going in a patient's abdomen or a patient um, body uh, so the, the again uh, it it keeps the accuracy level will be on the higher side as compared to the human hands the real time integration of operative data that is a motion compensations yes so uh, if you have ever encountered the robotic surgery in the operation theater so the real time integration uh, things has been more um, you can say uh, it's more focused and precise as compared to when the human arms and the human eyes are 
involved and uh, uh, constraining the instrument's positioning in a safe areas because uh, the whenever the robots are involved um, during the surgeries and all the constraints about the instruments and the placing the scalpel and other things will be more precise and more accurate heavy tool manipulations can easily be done by using a robot because many things uh, especially in in case of orthopedic surgeries uh, during during the orthopedic surgeries you know that how the surgeons are using the drills and the grills to uh, chop out your uh, bones and your uh, other other uh, skin and the cartilages and all especially in case of arthroplasty and the arthro surgeries so these instruments are very easily be carried out uh, by the robots uh, without interfering in the physical efforts of a human beings so hand compensations as i told you the the hand compensation problem is already resolved and the motion scaling that the micro surgeries is now the micro surgeries yeah it's micro surgeries when we talk about the micro surgery words it, it does not mean that uh, they are really very micro surgeries the micro surgeries here uh, i mean to say in case of a neurological surgical uh, intervention and all we know that uh, the neurological interventions and the uh, neurological surgeries are more uh, difficult aspect as compared to the other uh, other body parts so when we talk about these micro surgeries and all especially in the neuro neurological uh, su su surgeries in case of rta or in case of a cerebral uh, hemorrhage or a stroke patients so again the prognosis has been proven that the, the robotic surgeries are more versatile operation uh, in in hazardous environment can easily be done because the manpower is um, very less in numbers yeah, if we talk about uh, the robotic surgery interventions uh, if when, when when we know very well how the operation theaters uh, are used uh, one we have a scrub nurse we have a circulatory nurse and the circulatory nurse is roaming i mean in and out and on taking the articles uh, within the non scrub areas so these problems of uh, having a haphazard manpower and uh, and uh, over over um, we can say the compensatory mechanism used by the management nowadays to compensate the circulatory nurse or a or a scrub nurse or a many surgeons has are placed on a one or two table this already uh, been um, resolved just because of this robotic surgeries and uh, long distance surgeries yes uh, i hope this is what exactly uh, uh, poonam ma'am has mentioned before that the telepathy and tele surgery the word is there for this long distance surgeries still has not been done but yes if we talk about the recent trends the long distance surgeries with the robotic uh, interventions can also be possible by using the motion senses and all so i hope this robotic surgeries we we can see now that how how precise these surgeries are now there are some there are certain uh, constraints as well if you we talk about this uh, environmental const constraints uh, so there are certain difficulties it is not always proven we know very well technology always have a cons and cons on the one side if the technology is having a, a many benefits uh, for the patients it also has some constraints so uh, these constraints are few like uh, three hands are required for this normally normally uh, when when the surgeon is uh, the, the 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 primary surgeon who is performing a surgery he he can use only two hands and uh, the chances of getting infection and the errors will be less but the problem with the robotic surgery is that three hands are unnecessary sometime more than three are required depending on the type of surgeries because one arm of a robot can only hold one of the particular instrument it is not necessary that uh, many many things will be done together the monoclonal monoclonal vision is one of the again a problem because uh, the when we uh, use a robots for the surgical interventions it can it cannot see the complete surgical areas or the nearby uh, organs or the anatomical positions of the various other nerves or the blood vessels it only focuses on the area where the surgery has to be done or going to be performed so this is again a, again a very uh, a very very strong constraint by for using the uh, robotic uh, in the operation theater that they have a, they have a 
very low and narrow uh, focal of length or focal of vision. Position of the surgeon is again uh, one of the biggest constraint because in robotic surgeries, uh, the, uh, the 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 primary surgeon is holding the, the I mean the the robot is completely under the control control of a primary surgeon. So the primary surgeon has to be on the screen by holding the holding the all the arms of a robot in two hands only. So how difficult it is for a surgeon. That is why the robotic surgery is not been done by any of the unexperienced surgeon or a nursing nursing faculty. It it should always needs uh, expertise and a great um, and a long term training sessions to 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 handle the uh, robots in the operation theater because. One surgeon's two hands are holding the four and five arms of a robot together at a one time. So the great accuracy or the precision will be more. It's true, but it's again the credit goes to a surgeon itself. It is not the only credit goes to a robots. So the uh, hand-eye coordination is uh, again uh, again uh, a problem while uh, using this robots during the surgery. Uh, because uh, uh, the the surgeon is looking into a screen and his arms are away from the patients, and as the arms are moving, the robot is working. It is just like a virtual surgery. We can use a word nowadays because uh, virtual uh, things are uh, are I mean nowadays very common after the lockdown period. So when we use the word virtual um, as a prefix in in certain terms, so I think it will be easy for the for the students and the people to understand the things. So this is a kind of a virtual surgery while the surgeon is very away from uh, the patient and uh, at, at the corner of a OT, he's handling the robot. So the eyes are looking at the screen and the robot's arms are going inside the patient's body like an abdomen alone. So it's difficult sometimes to manage the, to, to do a coordination with the um, eyes of a surgeon and the arms of a, a robot. Uh, so loss of the mobility uh, due to a, a trocar. Trocar is uh, basically a kind of a, because we know very well that these these robots are uh, mechanically um, implanted. So many times, what happened? This this mobility and the expansion or, or the range of motion will be not that much appropriate as a human arms can do. So uh, the range of motion word is more. Uh, easy to understand here so the range of motion will be more uh, more, more comfortable and more easy if we, if uh, if a hands on experience is given to a, a surgeon rather than a, a robot limited workspace yes limited workspace is uh, uh, there for the robots and all a visual field occlusions are there that, that i have told you that the the focal area or the vision field of the vision of the robots are very narrow as compared to the human eyes and the physiological motions and the critical areas are are again uh, the thing the, physio the physiological mo motions uh, it, it it means that uh, the the range of motions of the uh, hands of the machines it is not uh, that much accurate as compared to the human hands so uh, uh, the the other constraints are the mental registration of the needle position with respect to the patient anatomy so again if the surgeons are if the if the surgeons are not that much uh, that that much uh, precise or expertise or exp have a good experience in in robotic surgeries so it is very uh, difficult to uh, surgeons to uh, place the scalpel or the needle uh, on the exact place where the the surgery is going to be performed Accurate control in the insertion for during the crossing of tissue in various stiffness. Again, it is it is a, uh, the amount of force when we use to uh, put an incision over the abdomen or the other body, body parts. So when the when the when the human beings are human beings are introduced, or when the when the human beings are performing the surgeries and all. So uh, your your brain exactly uh, exactly um, your sympathetic nervous system indicates your uh, your motor functions the motor areas and how much pressure then the surgeon need to put to put an incision over the body but if we talk about the robotics and all it's quite uh, difficult for the surgeon uh, again so uh, uh, the it needs a very precise um, um, practice and the 
experience uh, in this area. So uh, the other is accurate control of uh, the physiological motion compensation and the critical area avoidance are uh, again one of the other constraints. Uh, I, I told you before in the last paper that the physiological motion compensations are again the the it is again we can link it with the visual field analogs of a uh, robots. The visual field areas are that much not that much uh, wider as compared to human body so uh, that's because of that the other physiological parameters robert don't cannot sense actually uh, what the the real human being or the real surgeon can sense and the critical uh, areas avoidance can also be again put an error in the surgeries uh, once the critical areas uh, are the areas where where we need to take a very strong precautions that while cutting any arteries or uh, we, we just take care of first specific nerves that they, they should not be hampered during the surgeries. But still, I mean, uh, it's, it's when the robots are involved, it is very difficult for the surgeon to handle uh, these other critical areas and all. So uh, if we talk about the safety and all, there are certain uh, problems are there that robots share its work play, workspace with the medical staff and with the patients. So we know very well the metallic things are more prone to get infection. So the robots are completely made up made up of a, um, uh, yeah, they, they, they are sterile, but uh, still, if, if anything is going in the body from outside, then the chances of getting infections are more. Trial and error approach is not at all allowed in case of robots. Uh, trial and error approach here, we, we, we cannot um, uh, say that when when the human being uh, when, when the real time surgeons are involved in the operation theater it again the, the there is a, a trial and error approach is still not working but yes there are certain time um, when the surgeons are uh, giving uh, take a chance that suppose in case uh, in case of rta or a head injury or a kind of a cerebral edema or a stroke uh, where the clot has to be removed from the brain then when the surgeon they put a burr hole over the skull and all, he always take care that the burr hole should be in a particular depth and that a particular meninges or the layer of the brain won't get affected. So this trial and error can only be possible if a surgeon is involved himself physically in the surgery. This, this kind of trial and errors are not at all possible while the robots are involved. Sterility constraints, as I told you, uh, the sepsis, chances of sepsis getting sepsis will be more when the robots are involved. Compatibility with the other devices is again a challenging task because many there which are uh, robotic robotic in the operation theater. For example, in case of uh, gauge pieces and all, or placing a cotton swabs uh, while stopping the bleeding of a patient's abdomen. This, this for this, uh, uh, human has to be there on the, on the operation theater. This cannot be done by using the robots and all. So these are the areas where the, uh, the, the, the benefits are there for the robotic surgeries and but all things are there. It's um, about this. Cons are all so there for the robotic surgeries. Uh, here, actually, I don't want to show you the video for the robotic surgeries. Uh, prior, I was planning to show you uh, a video how the robotic surgeries are performed. But uh, trust me, you, you won't get anything if I show you the videos, how the robotic surgeries are involved. It is so jumbled. The operation theater is so jumbled in such a way. It is quite difficult to understand the things while using the videos. So I just make my PPT so limited for you people. So that whatever the nursing point of view, we need to understand that we has to that we has to be bothered about. So these were all about the uh, how the robots are being introduced nowadays, and still many areas are there where the robots has not been used. So these are this is one of the recent trend nowadays that we hope in the upcoming after ten or twenty years, and no more human beings are involved in the operation theater. Uh, I hope the it won't get affected the job of nurses because, uh, yeah, we, we are at a risk as well because if the robots are involved um, in operation theater, the the number of uh, the nurses in the operation bed are going to be minimized as well. So 
they they also affect it is also a constraint that they affect the man and the chances of getting uh, jobs in the operation theater matrons and all will be less uh, but still we have pawns and pawns for all the things so it's all about the robotic surgeries um and i doubt we can you can ask me so that i can just move on to my um, the second and the last topic over to the students okay thank you so much so the the other hello uh, are you there with me the students anon i hope uh, you are not sleeping in the online right. session yes sir okay thank you so much for your response because normally majority of time we have observed that during the online lecture students are doing their other personal things and all so don't worry i'm not going to going to make you bore in the home virtual classes and all i know it's it's quite boring sometime to involved in this virtual lectures and all that's why i don't want to make my people so jumbled for you people i made it very simple and and very 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 easy to understand so the area now i'm going to cover is really a gray area so if your faculties are uh, sitting over there so i just request them also to be uh, put a attention for just for 5 minutes because this is the area which are uh, not being used in healthcare not only in india across the globe and uh, this is the area uh, which is uh, um, mainly used to improve the quality uh, management processes management management process um, in the hospitals in the health healthcare settings so uh, in our profession there are no scope for errors we know very well and the the area where we are working in the hospitals and the critical areas and all we cannot expect any small error uh, while doing a patient care any error committed is all the difference between life and the death uh, between the uh, um, relief and the disability and we know there is no second chance for the patients when the patient gone it means it's completely gone we cannot retrieve him back um so so uh, so so the errors will be less now the question is how to uh, minimize these errors there are if, if i ask students over there uh, if, if i ask any of your faculty member or a student can you give me one example how the uh, errors in the healthcare setting um, can be minimized anyone can you please repeat what you okay, have no asked okay no issue we will take the we will take the questions at the end of the session okay so, okay if if you students are not want to respond over here no issue for that but just please give attention for 5 minutes only because this is really a very good topic which you only i think the students have not even thought of it so uh, there are many 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 ways to minimize the errors while working with the patient in the in the healthcare setting um for example if we uh, are having a good experience in the in the operation theater then we can say the experience more experience will minimize the getting chances of errors in patient care uh, but still is there any process by which we can really minimize the errors and we can go uh, towards the patient benefit side yes there is a area and the area which uh, is nowadays is pervading more in the society uh, that is uh, your uh, sigma so here the question i hope you have heard this name six sigma so i just here i will give you a, a, a brief a little bit history about the six sigma from where it it has so here i just want to uh, give a little bit history about from where being nowadays using emphasizing for the healthcare setting the this six sigma basically is is, is a component which is a totally uh, um, used by the it companies and it was first introduced by the 80s and uh, see in 1980s if we are saying it means it's 2023 right now and still this area is very new so you, we can you can you can just imagine how important this area is if we are uh, looking forward to put this on our papers and on our research topics so the purpose was when the motorola company was going to be down the revenue was going down and the financial condition of the motorola company was going down somebody introduced uh, this six sigma component and he claimed that the revenue of uh, the multinational companies can be 
increased tremendously by using the six sigma strategies so now the question came if the six sigma is only used to increase the revenue generations for any multinational companies then why we are using it for the quality management purposes the answer is quite simple because if the patients in the hospital if the discharge rate of the patients are more so if the discharge rate of the patient in the hospital is more and if the opd timings are less if the time duration of the lab technician to give the laboratory reports are less so obviously the the patients got fully satisfied and the revenue of the any hospital or any healthcare setting will be going touching the sky day by day so this area is now being introduced in the healthcare setting the purpose of the six sigma is to minimize the chances of getting errors so six sigma can change the uh, face of modern hospital healthcare delivery system so the competition in the healthcare sector is forcing the organization to look for the new ways and mean for improving their process so that the quality of the products and the services improve this satisfaction reduces and the patient satisfaction increases see if the patient then this satisfaction reduces and the satisfaction got a increases tremendously so obviously the the financial condition of the hospital as well will grow so ultimately the if the if your stakeholders and if your if your clients or our customers are getting benefits so your 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 organization will be on the higher side and this six sigma can not only be used in the healthcare setting it can also be used in the uh, students by students to or any universities or colleges to increase the the number of intake of students to increase uh, their remarks or to increase the standard of students education programs so in this study improvement of knowledge and practice score uh, of healthcare providers by application of six sigma is a main goal so the main goal of the six sigma is to improve the practice score of healthcare workers and the the hospital involve highly qualified professional dealing with the question of life and death and the hospital administ administration is a more complex than the administration of any other business or organization so that is why the this six sigma is uh, widely be used to minimize the errors in the healthcare setting while providing the cares so let's uh, no here is a question so what exactly the six sigma is the statistically based it is a statistically based process in improvement the methodology which aims to reduce the defects of any healthcare setting or uh, any area with a rate of 3.4 per billion opportunities just imagine so i hope you you have you have understand this meaning of 3.4 per billion opportunities it means um i just make it easy for you to understand suppose if you flip a coin and the getting of chance is head if you if you flip a coin 10 times and what is the probability of getting a chance of head every time if if we ask this question to anyone nobody can answer because it's all about the luck how how the coins is tossed down but if we use a six sigma in case of a patient care not not obviously not not in the flipping of a coin and all so the, the the chances of errors will be as less as possible that is equal to the rate of 3.4 per billion opportunities means the errors will be very 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 less if we introduce six sigma in healthcare setting though defects in the six sigma process focus on the customer requirement and thus very customer oriented fundamental methodology nowadays which the 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 methodology which six sigma involves is a dmap the acronym is dmap where d defines d means the define m means a measure a means a analysis and i is improve and c stand for the control now here is the main part of the uh, six sigma how uh, these all dmap approaches are uh, going to be used so here the suppose i just made you understand by by using one example suppose if uh, if you want to introduce uh, uh if someone want to put a im injection in the hospital and what are the chances that the patient won't get pain while while, in, while inserting the syringe while giving the im injections the chances are very 
uh, less that the patient won't get hurt while pricking, but the range will go uh, if the patient. What? Mute yourself. Hello. Thank you. So, uh, in this strategy, if we introduce the DMAC before giving the uh, IM injection to the patient, how the error of getting patients level of pain will be minimized. I just want to give you an example. So in this defined phase, the, the first of all, we define and evaluate the project improvements that, so in this case, uh, giving IM injection to a patient, uh, it, uh, so here, here the, how to define. So in this, in this uh, nursing procedure, the, the core component is what all, what all areas are there, which, can uh, make the patient get pain. It, it depends on the patient's skin thickness. It depends on uh, the, the type of IM injection the nurse is giving, whether it's interdermal or subcutaneous or uh, intramuscular. So these are the components will come in the defined phase. So see, here I don't want to give you a more right. emphasis on making you understand about the six sigma because it is difficult for you to understand. So my, my, my just core interest is to just introduce this recent trends for you people. Because in nursing aspect, nowhere we will find this kind of a methodology. Uh, so in the major phase, in the major, we, we just need to collect the data of the selected problems. So in this case of intramuscular injections, the problem is patient get hurt, the genetic nerve or some other area of the patient blood vessel got hurt. So that, that problem has to be identified. And in the Analysis phase, we analyze the data established, confirm the vital few determinants and the perform validate and the hypothesis. So in this analysis phase, uh, any uh, for this intramuscular injection, the nurse need to hypothesize that if the condition will be, if patient is so fatty, then what all things a nurse need to be taking care of while giving the IM injections, whether, whether, whether she will stretch the skin or she will hold the skin tightly together or uh, if the patient is having a very um, very uh, febrile skin so in this case also the nurse should understand that whether this what all technique the nurse has to be used so that the patient's pain will be minimized now the, the second last is a is your improved phase improved strategy develop ideas remove the root cause of that problem so here the root cause of problem is uh, the the type of skin patient is having the type of injection patient is having whether the 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 drug is oil based or a water based so suppose these three are the areas which which can lead to a patient or can feel a pain of IM injections so the nurse should keep working on these three areas and try to find out how these three areas can be can be uh, can be re reduced. So that the patient won't get hurt much. So is the last phase, the improved phase, and last is the control phase. The con in the control phase, whatever SOP or the standard operations or the or the principles the nurse has been used in the improved phase, that the nurse need to be st uh, standardize it and make a standard uh, principles for that, and it maintains the consistency of keep repeating that procedures and the principles for the other patients as well so the end result will be the whoever the next patient she or he will be uh, facing he will use she will the she will use the same principles of giving im injections and the patient won't get pain while get, getting a prick so ultimately patient get happy and patient if so this is just a small example i gave you just to make you understand Otherwise, uh, there are many areas like in the next PPT, I just show you the areas, uh, but all areas is DMAC used. So, so, the number of errors may increase. Improving the lab turnover times can be reduced. reducing appointment waiting OPD. 
decreasing step of supply chain can also be reduced. Accelerating the reimbursement of insurance claims, improving patient outcome. So these are the few areas only uh, which I just want to shock is you, which can be really improved. And many of this area has already been improved um, by using the Six Sigma. Uh, so here I just want to make you understand that I myself, um, my PhD topic was on Six Sigma itself. So when I use this uh, Six Sigma component in my PhD thesis, so my other area which I have chosen was to reduce the medication errors. So you won't believe that uh, it was a longitudinal study after the, um, after the getting the data retrospectively uh, from the, the number of medication errors that particular hospital was having. And after introducing of six months of Six Sigma training program among their staff and to believe that the medication number of medication errors were really reduced. So that was the area which I have uh, used uh, first time in the Six Sigma to minimize the medication error in the hospital settings. So very few areas are there nowadays in the healthcare setting which uh, Six Sigma is being incorporated. So I re really request the students as well as the faculty members to please read out this Six Sigma component. But this is a, a really very recent and upcoming trend which are going to be create an evolution in the field of healthcare and the nursing. So uh, here I just uh, want to uh, make my topic shut down. So any doubt you can please ask. Thank you so much. Over to the student and the faculty members. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful session. Now we have understood about the robotic surgery and how Six Sigma factors has improved the patient care about the Six Sigma project methodology. Thank you, sir. So now we have came to the end of the program, but it's not the end completely. Here I would like to invite Professor Dr. Jitendra Singh, HOD Department of Medical Surgical Nursing of Tirthankar Mahavir College of Nursing to deliver a vote of thanks. Over to you. Okay, uh, thank you, Rekha. So really, uh, today we had a nice session uh, about medical surgical nursing. And I feel honored and privileged to be here for giving a vote of thanks. Uh, am I audible, Ms. Rekha? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay, okay. I convey my deep regard and heartily thanks to our today's guest lecture, uh, Professor Dr. Deepak Sethi. HOD in Medical Surgical Nursing Department, Sada University, Greater Noda. Sada accepted our invitation of today's guest lecture uh, with his busy schedule. And uh, thank you very much, sir, because I only. Sir, please, uh, please uh, switch on your camera. Day. Switch on your camera while proposing the vote of thanks. At least we can yes, see. Yes, ma'am, it, it's, no, it's not only. I, I'm trying, ma'am. I think Why network issue is something. Reflecting. I think network issue is something. Okay, okay. So today network, no? First, now it is and... visible. Now you are visible. Okay. 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 Yes. <clears throat> so uh, thank you very much, sir, that you have accepted our invitation. And you have uh, delivered very nicely and really elaborately the guest lecture. And uh, uh, in the, really, uh, sir wasn't busy also that time, but uh, uh, due to principal ma'am and uh, we have approached and sir have accepted. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank our uh, beloved principal ma'am, Professor uh, Dr. Mrs. Poonam Sharma, for guiding, instructing, and offering needed help to complete this guest lecture. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank our vice principal ma'am, uh, M. Jocelyn, for spending her valuable time in this guest lecture. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Attitude and gratitude is the essence of belongingness. I take this opportunity to thank all teaching, non-teaching, faculty, students, and uh, who participate in this guest lecture. Thank you uh, very much all. Thank you again. Uh, it's over to you now, Rekha. Thank you, sir. Oh, may I request all the participants and all the uh resource person and all, please make your camera on and take the photographs. Screenshot, please. So all participants just you on your camera. Yes, ma'am, we had taken this screenshot. Okay, any doubt is there? 
they can uh, can uh, start record, the video right if any doubt from the student side they can write in the chat box or we'll answer i think i think uh, all of the students has understood the topic very each uh, and everything they have understood <laughs> they are not having yeah. any doubts huh? yeah and uh, i would like to say can, thank you so much uh, ma'am actually it's after so long i am just uh, we are just virtually meeting you i know at last time i think in the college time only we have i have seen you when uh, though you are my teacher right now even even if, if i'll get there get become a 60 years old still you will be my teacher only so thank you so much once again ma'am it's really i, I really want to thanks to uh, mr shikabat mm -hmm. as well because i was keep disturbing him back to back for because i have time constraint to uh, get my get my schedule lecture so he's really humble to you know attending all the calls <laughs> even at night night time yeah, also yeah. yesterday i called him thank you so much sir, for arranging such a uh, uh, for for giving a support for arranging a guest lecture for your students and all uh, thank you so thank you so much all your nursing fraternity and the students as well uh, i hope we will we will be collaborate for the upcoming um, certain task as well for yeah the definitely uh, for the such point of view as well yeah. Yeah, from our part also, we would like to say very, very thankful to you that you have accepted our invitation and you have done, uh, you know, the session was taken very in elaboratively, you have taken each and every aspect. I think it will be a fruitful session for all the, our students and they will utilize this knowledge in their clinical as well as in the uh, research areas when they will use their Six Sigma approach in every aspect. And as the medical surgical nursing is the holistic in nature, not only it is pertaining to the medicine or uh, other fields. So all other things are also inter collaboration uh, required. Okay, so hopefully this session will be uh, fruitful for everybody. And definitely, if the students are having any doubt, they can approach you after that. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. The students. Thank you. Thank okay. you so. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much, Thank Professor you. Deepak. We would like to see you again in the future collaborations. Thank you very much. Same here, ma'am. Same here. Thank you so much. Okay, sir. Good. Thank you all for making this program successful. Your presence among us really added glory to this function. So I hear Rekha Pan signing off and binding this program. May God bless you all. Stay happy.